All right, and we are rolling. Hello, hello, good people. My name is Junior, and welcome back to the Daily Digital Design Show. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about XR, AR, VR, RR, basically all the R's in the world. Um, what exactly are they? What do they mean? What do they mean to us? They've been popping up all around the world, probably the past 10 years, maybe 12 years or something like that. Uh, but I don't think too many people actually know what they are, what they stand for, what they mean. Uh, so today in this episode, we'll be just covering over the basics of them um, and how you can actually get started with them if you wanted to. All right. So check back here with you soon. Alright everyone, welcome back to the Daily Digital Design Show. So, let's start with the most basic of the R's, RR. What that stands for is just real reality. Uh, that is just the real world that we actually live in, that we breathe in, that we play in, do everything in right now. Um, so that really is just about it. RR, if you ever hear of that, um, you may not hear too much of it in the tech world, but it is out there just because they need to have a way to separate it from all the other stuff uh, and all the other stuff all fit un underneath an umbrella called XR. Uh, so XR basically just stands for extended reality. Um, a lot of people are saying that XR or the X in XR really just is a variable. So if you used to math, um, the X is just like a placeholder for all the other letters, uh, R, V, A, whatever. Um, but it could also mean for uh, or it could also stand for XR. Um, and what XR basically is, is a real and virtual environment that is altered by a computer generated uh, from here on out, I'll probably call it CG because I'm just so used to CG uh, instead of just saying the whole thing out, computer generated. Um, but it's altered by some computer generated graphics um, that could be either 2D graphics, usually that's text, uh, or it could be 3D graphics that could be an object or something like that. Um, and then you can, utilize it through a handheld device uh, like a cell phone or a tablet or a wearable like a headset or some sort of um, glasses or something like that um, and what it basically does what XR basically does it just enhances uh, your view so if you're currently in RR the real world um, you're looking at the world through your regular eyes but if you want to uh, jump into a more enhanced version of it um, you'll be able to do that using some AR technology, which stands for augmented reality. Um, or you can you know, completely replace it with some VR technology, which is the virtual reality uh, side of things. So XR, again, is just extended reality, extending your field of view out into a more digital, into a more technical, um, technological world out there, um, either completely replacing it or just, you know, enhancing it a little bit further from there i feel like we should jump into vr um, reason being is because i feel like that one is the most well known out there so far so virtual reality um, a lot of people have been using virtual reality for gaming um, and all other sorts of entertainment such as concerts um, such as films uh, such as sports uh, they even in recent days they've been also um, joining in on like social meetups and stuff like that and what VR basically does or what VR basically is uh, that it allows a person to become fully immersed in a virtual experience a fully immersed in a virtual environment um, so if you take you know the real world it has you know everything that you need in it um, but if you go ahead and put on some VR headsets some virtual reality headsets um, you'll be able to enter into a whole new world. You'll be able to enter into uh, what they call the virtual world or some people like to call it the metaverse as well. And once you put on these VR headsets, you'll be completely separate from the actual world. And the reason why I say that is because most VR headsets completely replace all of your five senses, your seeing, your touch, your uh, um, smell, your hearing, all of that stuff. Um, uh, gets replaced by these VR headsets 
and these would be considered as multi-sensory systems in which you will no longer be in touch with the real world. You'd just be fully immersed into the virtual world. Uh, I just recently found out that they have um, virtual vineyards. So if you've ever been to a wine vineyard, uh, you can do wine tasting and stuff like that there. Well, they have that in the virtual reality world as well. Um, again, the main thing that VR has been used for is gaming. Um, Facebook has their Oculus device that they can have a whole bunch of games on, a whole bunch of apps and stuff like that for people to play with. But yeah, so if you're thinking about getting a VR device, just know that you'll be completely immersed inside of that virtual ex experience and that virtual envir environment. Uh, if you've seen it on social media lately, a lot of people got those VR headsets for Christmas and whatnot. Um, and a lot of people <laughs> have been playing with them and been running into walls or running into objects in their house, breaking TVs and stuff like that uh, because they, they really feel like they are in a completely different world. They forget that they are in their own living room um, and you really don't have to move with these VR headsets. Some of them um, make you feel like you have to move, but they really just uh, operate with the tilt of your head. You can move forward and backward uh, just by tilting your head. All right, and so that brings us now over to AR augmented reality so augmented reality uh, is pretty much the opposite of VR so you don't have to be fully immersed inside of a virtual world in front of a virtual environment um, you can be still in the real world and use an AR app on your cell phone uh, so take for example Google Translate if you are an English speaking person and you travel to another country um, some of the street signs may be in a different language so what you can do is use Google Translate use your phone uh, directly on your phone put it up to the sign and then Google Translate will automatically show on that sign what it actually says um, this is a form of augmented reality where you actually take the real world our aspects in the real world and you replace it with digital technology um, but you never actually leave the real world you never actually remove yourself from it you just add a piece of digital um, uh, a digital aspect on top of it. Uh, so think of it more of as an overlay. Another form of AR is a um, uh, furniture. So IKEA, if you heard of the company called IKEA, uh, they have an app called IKEA Place. Um, and what they can do is take the furniture inside of their catalog, their digital catalog, uh, and put it on into the app. And then you can download it on your phone and actually portray it inside of your room, inside of your living room, bedroom, whatever, uh, whatever furniture it is, you can actually see it in real time, the actual size of it and everything. The only downside about this is that with AR, you are unable to really interact with the real world. Uh, what I mean by this is that think of a ghost, you know, if a ghost was in a room and you waved your hand around, you wouldn't be able to touch it. Same thing with these um, uh, AR technology everything that you place inside the real world isn't able to interact with the real world and stuff in the real world isn't able to interact with that virtual world as well. Uh, so if you place your furniture from Ikea inside your living room and a table was in the way, well, it'll just kind of phase through the table. Um, it'll act like the table is not even there, which is not really an ideal situation. Uh, another way of thinking about AR technology, if you use Snapchat, um, Snapchat is really big in the in the social media world. Um, they have what they call Bitmoji. So you can actually take your Bitmoji and portray it through your cell phone into the actual real world. But again, it is not interacting with the real world, so it's kind of hard to use. Uh, which brings us to the last one, which is the MR. Uh, so MR just stands for Mixed Reality. And Mixed Reality is basically just a mixture between the VR and the AR. So we have the virtual reality, we have the AR, the augmented reality, and we take the best of both worlds and kind of mesh them two together. Um, the best example for that is that about, oh geez, I think it was like uh, 2016, 2017, when Pokemon Go came about. So Pokemon Go is a game uh, based on the Pokemon trading card game. Uh, that was directly on your cell phone and it would use a form of AR technology 
Uh, some people say it is actually just AR technology. Um, I feel like it may be a mix between only because it uses uh, GPS technology as well to direct you along where to go, you know, to find Pokemon. Um, then it also uses, you know, like buildings and stuff like that. So it would never place a Pokemon on a street because it's kind of interacting with that actual street. Um, they want people to be safe with it. So it, it'll place it somewhere in a park, uh, maybe at a church or someplace like that. So that's why I feel like it's kind of, um, it's kind of borderline mixed reality and just directly AR um, because it does have that uh, interaction with the real world, but it's not, you know, just not a whole lot. Uh, another case would be there is um, some AR apps out there uh, where they have like games with robots um, and these robots can actually scan the entire room and then figure out how to maneuver around the room so it won't hit any tables, it won't hit any chairs, it won't hit any you know walls or anything and that can actually interact with the walls like uh, display stuff on the wall. So that would be a case where we're using the AR technology but actually allowing it to interact with the real world so it's more like a, a mixed reality. Um, oh, I forgot to mention also that another form of VR um, that a lot of people don't know is these 360 videos. So these 360 videos would be considered um, real world content um, where you can actually use like a, um, um, your cell phone to watch some 360 videos uh, while everything else would be more synthetic content. So it's all CG animated um, synthetic you know, graphics and stuff like that. Um, so just to do a quick recap, so RR is basically the real world, real reality uh, that we all live in, that we breathe, sleep in and everything like that. Uh, then we jump into XR, which is again, just the umbrella um, that holds together all of the other R's that are in there. Uh, XR just standing for extended reality, uh, which allows us to enhance our world that we live in. Um, then we jump into VR, which is, you know, using those headsets, the virtual reality headsets, when we want to fully immerse ourselves inside of a virtual world and do everything inside of that, you know, digital world inside the metaverse. Um, then we jump over into the AR side of it, which is the augmented reality, uh, which allows us to still be in the real world, but still portray a few digital items and a few digital things on um, inside the real world. Um, another big thing with the AR technology is that, you know, they're coming out with um, wearables. So Nike is actually creating some digital shoes and stuff like that to where if you point a camera at somebody else's shoes, you actually see that digital shoe. Um, you, you won't see their shoe that they're wearing. If you point the camera at it, you'll see their digital shoe. Or if you, you know, look at it with your AR glasses, you can see their actual digital shoe. Uh, you can see their digital avatar. You can see their digital whatever that they have on them at that moment. And then the last part of it would be the MR, the mixed reality, um, which again, the biggest thing about that is that occlusion. Uh, occlusion being this the computer generated objects um, that can be visibly obscured by objects inside of our physical environment. All right, so I really hope I provided some insight for you all um, on what the different, you know, the different R's are. Uh, my biggest thing is the AR technology. I feel like AR will really, really, really change the world in many positive ways. Um, they are already doing like, you know, job trainings and stuff like that uh, with AR or augmented reality, uh, especially like in the healthcare. Um, it's really easy to um, do surgery inside of, you know, instead of quote unquote practicing on a actual human being, you can practice on, you know, an augmented human being or something like that. Um, and then you can also have, you know, uh, a doctor from another country using some AR technology or maybe even some VR technology um, assist you while you're doing something, you know, some sort of surgery that you may need assistance with, uh, but they weren't able to catch a flight to come out there and, and do so. Alrighty, so that will be all it for today. I appreciate your guys' time and I will see you all next time.